Hi and welcome to another video in our series focusing on numbered lists. Uh, now what I've uh, chosen to do is to divide up various things that you can do with numbered lists just into a series of videos so it's easier to pick and choose perhaps something that you particularly uh, need some information on rather than just having an entire video that focuses on all the various things because that could be quite lengthy. There are a number of actions specifically uh, that focus on the use of numbered lists. So that's why I've just decided to divide things up. This one is going to be looking at the uh, create function, which works with numbered lists and why you might want to do that and how you might set it up. So as an example, um, I'm going to draw on experience which has seen me work with uh, a number of different house builders. I'm sure they won't mind me sharing this, it's a fairly generic thing. Obviously house builders build on plots or refer to units and uh, it's very common that they will want to obviously at some point in a particular development um, add new plots. And this generally isn't um, always an admin controlled thing. Uh, certainly in, in initial stages, if you have, say, a land director who's looking at a particular piece of land and wants to maybe think about how many plots could go on a particular development, he would be in charge of adding those. And then as you go live, it's certainly a development manager, so an end user who would be responsible for adding in those plots. So it's not an admin controlled thing. So you want to think about creating an action that's easy for the end user to use, but also that will maintain the integrity and accuracy of, uh, of your application. So you can see here, I have a list called plots and it's rolling up into something, another list called developments. So we've got a parent hierarchy. Now the names are catchy. I don't know why someone hasn't latched onto these before. Housing development down the road, big city penthouses, my new housing development. And if we look, I currently have plot one of big city penthouses. So as it stands at the moment, this plots list is not a numbered list. So you can see it here. It's not ticked as numbered, which by the way, is all you need to do to create or set up a list as a numbered list. So it's just standard. Now I have a dashboard, create new plots. So as it goes at the moment, uh, there is no particular create function that works with a standard list. So what are the options you've got? Well, you can do what I've done here, which is publish the list to a dashboard, making sure obviously that the end users have right access to it. Uh, if you weren't aware, you can limit what they can and can't do. So for example, you could uh, edit this so they can't add or delete at all. Or you might say, well, I want them to be able to insert, but I certainly wouldn't want to give them access to delete a plot. It can get as customized as you like. But if we were to go down this route, then you could say, um, okay, I'm going to add in plot two. So if you obviously want multiple ones, which is likely to be what a development manager would be doing, you would have to type them all out like that. Um, obviously you could copy and paste if you had them somewhere else, but you get the drift. They have to be uh, unique and you would have to type them as such. And then there you are. The thing with this is a couple of things. Obviously that's fairly time consuming because in something like this, it could be that a development manager is wanting to add in 50, 75, 100 plots all at once. That's hardly the quickest way. Um, even if they do paste it in from somewhere else, you've still got to have, say, a spreadsheet or whatever that you're um, pasting from, so it's not great. Um, the other thing as well is now, let's just say I'm another development manager. This is mine here. I'm in charge of my new housing development. So in ICOM, and it is standard, they will either be referred to as plots or units, and then that's it across the board, which whatever the development is. So I come in and I do my plot one, Okay, now how scary is that? As you know, uh, in lists, an item must be unique. So what's happened there is I think I've created plot one. 
In actual fact, what I've done is move plot one from big city penthouses into my new housing development. All that information's come, so I've now taken a load of information out of another development, stuck it into mine, and I might not even be aware of that, so I could then be typing over something else. Um, it's just not great. To get around that, obviously what you would need to do is, let's say I now go with plot two, it would have to be unique. So what would generally then happen is obviously you could, con you could concatenate the development name with the plot name. So I would have, um, oh no, it's not big house, is it? It's my new um, housing development plot two, for example. And there's my plot two, and that leaves that plot two alone. Um, that, just from an appearance point of view, is really unwieldy. I've, I've yet really to work with a, a house builder that says, yes, that's fine. What they want is plot one, plot two, plot three, and they want that for every single development they have. They don't want this big concatenation. So this could then be a prime reason why you would want to use a numbered list and also then combine that with the ability to create um, X number of new items at the same time. So how can we then go about turning this into a numbered list. So I tell you what I'm gonna do first is just to keep things nice and clean. Let's just go from scratch. Obviously you don't have to do this. If you've got an existing list and you want to turn it into a numbered list, you don't have to delete and start again. And uh, that's actually covered in another one of um, our videos. So you can find that on our website. Uh, so here we go. How do you create a numbered list? Well, you set up a list as normal and you then say ticket to be numbered. Now, if you've watched the previous video that we have um, about what a numbered list then does, all it's doing is it's then allowing Anaplan to create unique lists by numbering them and it precedes them with a hash. So you need to control how the end user sees it by giving it a text formatted property that you then assign as the display name. So I don't currently have one set up because this wasn't a numbered list in the past. Now you don't have to call this display name by the way, it's not a, a system driven thing, but it seems to make sense. It just keeps it very clear and it has to be text. So now I can go back here and say that it needs to pull the display name from the property that I have called display name. So if we now look at actions, you'll see there is an action called create. If I select create item in, you'll notice the only options it gives me are my numbered lists. Um, good tip on naming convention is numbered lists is to proceed them with a hash. So that's how I know straight away their numbered lists. Obviously I want to create an item in plots and I'm going to call my action add new plots. What you can then do, this is fairly typical across a lot of the actions, is once uh, they've run this action, you can then get it skipped straight to another dashboard um, and you can prompt for various things. So with the show the parent or only recently created items, not too concerned about that. I just want to show you really the raw, what is to do with the numbered list and the create function. So I'm just gonna say, okay. So if we now go to, where are you? There it is, add new plots. And I'm just going to um, pop that on our existing um, dashboard that we have. So if I now want to create a new plots in my housing development down the road. I can say add new plots into um, that housing development down the road. And you can see there, it's adding multiple items. And I can simply click as many as I like. So that's how I can add in single items and if then of course it's very easy for me to say that should be plot one, plot 
got to there are other efficient ways of doing this so we've set up various things where they then just choose from a master that they want to call their items plot one plot two plot three etc you can even automate that and, and tab on another action here but i think that's enough that you can see that it then doesn't care you can have multiple plot ones plot twos however many you like the other advantage this has in, and by this i mean using a numbered list is if you still have your um, list published here on the dashboard big difference you'll notice is if I add it says how many would I like to add so I can just say yep 75 and there you go and so that's how your development manager suddenly goes from having to go click 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 or type out plot one plot two plot three to saying yep give me 75 new plots so that's one reason why using a numbered list uh, is very beneficial. It aids the look and feel, so you don't have some weird concatenation just so you get a unique display name. Here you can have plot ones across all developments and it's not going to mess things up. Um, and you can also create a very snazzy little create function, which at the click of a button will add in. Also using the plus up here, you can add in multiple items at the same time that's about it really um, as I said there's lots of other actions that work around uh, the use of numbered lists so I have divided them up and you can dive in and out of the various actions that you need and you can find all of those on our website innovar.co.uk or on our innovar youtube channel